Okay, so this is our review. So most of you don't have this completely completed. So make sure you follow along. Uh, and if you're so inclined, copy down the correct answers. Uh, try and stay focused as best you can. And let's get through this together. So true or false, multiplying a number by one will get 100% of the number. The answer for that, of course, is true. And if you needed to prove it on a test, you would say example, 100% of $60, 100% of the 100 over 100, which is equal to 1. So you might have something like that to prove that multiplying a number by 1 is actually uh, getting 100% because that's going to equal 60. And you get a variation to that, of course. There are different ways you could show it, but that's one way you could have done it. Your second question says, multiplying a number by 0, decimal 1, 5, will get the final price, that's the important part, of an item including 15% HST. So let's say that that $60 item again. If I multiply that $60 item by 0 0.15, I'm going to get 9. Is 9 the final price? No. What is 9? 9 is just the tax. So the answer is false. In order to get the final price, what do you have to multiply 60 by? 1.15. Because just like the last question, when you multiply by 1, you get 100%. And when you multiply it by decimal 1.5, you get the 15% tax. So in order to get the final price, you need to multiply it by 1.15, not decimal 1.5. Question three on the true-false list. Oh, Kevin, this is a frustrating occupation. If an item is discounted 15%, you can multiply it by negative 0 0.15 to get the discount. To me, if I wasn't really thinking, I might say true, because that seems reasonable. Positive decimal 1.5 would be a 15% tax. Negative 0 0.15. Let's see if that works. The $60 item, if I multiply it by negative 0 0.15, would I get the discounted price? Let's see. So sixty dollars multiplied by decimal one five. Let's change that to a negative. Does negative nine work for the discounted uh, to get the discount? Well, actually, you can, can't you? The discount is technically uh, negative zero point nine. So this is an interesting question. Uh, what what should have said get the discounted price? So I made a mistake in my writing because the answer was supposed to be false. So I know none of you have this correct because you probably said true because it actually is true. But the intention was discounted price, which I wanted you to say false. How would I get the discounted price? I don't multiply it by negative 0 0.15. What do I multiply it by to get the discounted price, Colby? Nope. Remember this one. That's the price, okay? Remember, if I discount it 15%, what do I multiply it by to get the discounted price? So in order, since you're paying for 85, this is the discounted price right here, and I'll put it in the different color box. If you lose 15%, you pay, that 85% is the discounted price. So therefore, the actual answer is you would take that $60 and multiply it by 0 0.85 to get the discounted price because you lose 15% off the price, which means you only pay for 85% of it, and therefore, how much was the discount again? Nine bucks. So if I multiply these two together, what should it give me? You think it's going to give me nine dollars? should give me 51, shouldn't it? Because $60 take away nine dollars. The discounted price would be fifty-one bucks, because you lose nine dollars, right? Okay. And your last true/false. And four dollars. Oh, there's another grammatical error. A four-dollar container of cream cheese was expired, so the score store discounted it five percent. Ten years later, it still hasn't sold, so the store discounted it a further five percent. The final price was three dollars and twenty cents. Is that true or false? Well, you can do this with mental math. Let's think about this again. If this is the $4 container and I discount it 5%, what percent am I paying for? 
95%. So therefore, the first discount will be $4, or 95% of $4, or 0 0.95 times 4. So the discounted price, 95% of $4 is $3.80. So that cream cheese sat on the shelf for 10 more years. Nobody bought it. So they said, you know what, let's discount that $3.80 item 5 more percent. So again, we're going to pay for 95% of the $3.80. And we're going to get the final price, 95% of $3.80 is $3.61. So therefore, the answer is false. It would actually be $3.61, not $3.20. Another way you could have done it is just say, 10% is 40 cents, so 5% is 20 cents, $4 take away 20 cents is 3.80, which is what we got right over here, same, different way of getting it, but we still got the same thing, then 10% of 3.80 is 38 cents, 5% is half of 38 cents, which is 19 cents. So the three dollar eighty cent discounted cream cheese take away nineteen cents is three sixty. Now we get into just your we call them numeric responses or just answer them. How much is a twelve hundred dollar item with ten percent PH PST and then five percent GST? Now remember the PST is added on first before you calculate your GST. So ten percent is 120 bucks. So the $1,200 item plus your PST means that item will cost you $1,320 after you put on the 10% PST. Now the 5% is not on the 1,200; it's on the 1,320. 5% of 1,320. 10% uh, is 132. 5% is half of 132, which is 50, 65, 66 dollars, I think. Is that right? 66? 66. So 5% is 66 dollars. So 1320 plus your 66 means your final price is 1386 dollars. Did anyone do this from a non mental math standpoint? Did anyone use, try and create uh, an equation that would work for it? Let's try. I'm going to do it right now, and if most of you don't have this, pay attention. So the PST price is 10% of $1,200. I want to make sure I multiply that not by 0 decimal 1. Where's my eraser at? Right here. There's my eraser. But 1 decimal 1. Because if I multiply it just by decimal one, I just get the tax. But if I multiply it by one decimal one, I get the tax and it. And that would be, when I multiply it out, it would be this number. And what did we do with this number? We actually found 5% of that and added it onto it, right? Which means we're going to take this number here and multiply it by one decimal zero five. And if you wrote that down, that would be the very complicated way of solving it. But for some of you, you need that academic challenge. Others, not so much. But this would be a perfect way to explain how to do it uh, using a bed mask question. So brackets first, 1.1 1 .1 or 110% of 1,200 is. Take that number and multiply it by 105%, and you get your final answer of $1,386, which is what we got before. A much easier way to get the answer, really, right? much more concise and simplify. Question 9 says, imported goods in Wilzikstan, it's a real country, I looked it up, are first taxed 8% for a made-up reason, and then a further 12% for another reason on the already taxed price. What is the final price on $2.8 million worth of Crocs imported into Wilzikstan? That's a lot of Crocs. That's a crock of, crock of crap is what that is. So, if I think about 8%, 8% of $2.8 million, I'm going to have to actually write $2.8 million 
properly. 8% is a decimal of 2.8 million to a calculator is 8% of 2.8 million equals the tax will be $224,000. That is for the first made-up tax. So your cost of your crocs plus your tax means three million twenty four thousand dollars is your first made up tax. And then they're like, you know what? We're not done yet. We're gonna tax that amount by twelve percent. So twelve percent of three million twenty four thousand will be twelve percent of three million twenty four thousand which will be a further three hundred and sixty two thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars. Add that on to your three million twenty four thousand dollars. Oh don't do many zeros. And your final price is three million three hundred and eighty six thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars. Is that right? Did I write that down right? I think so. Oh no, three hundred and thirty six. That's six right there. Now that's a lot of work. Is there an easier way I could have done that? Okay. How do I get the cost of the goods and the 8% tax in one calculator move. Go ahead. Correct. So one decimal zero eight, which is all of the goods and the tax, multiplied by 2,800,000. That would be the price that should give us that price right there, right? So. 1.08 multiplied by 2.8 million gives us that price. And then what did we do with that amount? We multiplied that amount by 1.12. All of it plus 12% more tax. So take that and multiply it by 1.12, and we get our final answer of 3,386,880. Crazy Willie's Pencil Emporium. Gavin goes there all the time. It's having a sale. The $8.20 uh, box of premium pencils is being discounted 20%. What is the final price of the box after 15% HST? So this time I'm not going to do the whole mental math part. I'm going to do it from a grade 8 perspective. If this $8.20 box of pencils is being discounted by 20%, Alexis, what percent am I going to pay for of the box if it's discounted 20%? I'm going to pay how much of it? What percent of the box? 80%. So I'm going to pay for 80% of the 820 or 80% of the 820. This should tell me what the discounted price is. So 80% of the $8.20 means that box of pencils is now going to be 656. Now, Olivia, what has to happen to that $6.56 box of pencils? $6.56 $6 box of pencils. It has to be taxed, right? And how much tax is going to be put on there? 15%. So this amount here is going to be taxed 15%. Now, if I multiply it by this number, I'm only going to get how much tax I pay, correct? But if I multiply it by this number, I'm going to get, multiplying it by 1 will get me all of that number. Multiplying it by this will get me the remainder of the tax. So that should be my final answer. So let's see if this works. Bring my calculator over here. 80% of the $8.20 box of pencils is this much. Multiply that by the tax of 1.15, and our final answer is... Seven dollars 
and 54 cents, four tenths of a cent, or seven dollars and 54 and four tenths of a cent, or seven dollars and 54 cents and two fifths of a cent, or approximately seven dollars and 54 cents if I round. Now, of all those answers, they're all good. The best answers are the first three. Uh, and the last answer is okay. Interesting thing, because we don't have pennies anymore, the actual amount I would pay for this thing is $7.55 because we round up to the nearest penny. Kmart is having a sale on trench coats, and Calvin buys three. The original cost of each coat was $225. They were first discounted at 20%. And then if you showed your student ID, you got another 10% off. And if you were under six feet tall, you saved a further 20% off the student's price. What was the final cost to Calvin? All right, let's talk about this first discount. That $225 coat. Let's just talk about one coat, not three coats. Let's just talk about one coat. How do I get the first discount? What do I have to multiply that by to get the price after the first discount. Julius, if there's a 20% discount, how much of the per, what percent of the coat's price will I pay for? 80%. So I'm going to say that one coat that's going to be the price of one coat after the first discount. But this price, if you have a student ID, you save 10% more. So what percent of that would you pay if you had a student ID, Gavin? No, you're not going to actually have to pay more. It's a 10% discount. So what percent are you paying for of it if you save 10%? What should we talk about, Willis? Chloe, if you save 10%, what percent of the coat sale price do you pay for? So if you save 10%, you only have to pay for 90% of that. Does that make sense? Maybe. But if you're under six feet tall, on this price here, the student ID price, which is in square brackets, you get to save another 20%, Chloe. Now, if you save 20% off something, what percent do you pay for? That's right, 80%. Good stuff. So 80% of this student ID discounted price looks like this. Now, I'll guarantee you in this room, not one of you had that written down when you did the work yourself. But I want you to have it now because it makes sense. This is the sale price if you save 20%. This is the student ID price because you get to have this one discounted 10% because you had a student ID. And if you had uh, under six feet tall, you get to save another 20%. Let's work this out and see what it works out to be. To my first brackets, this middle part right here, do that first. 80% of 225. So the sale price was 180. If you are uh, have a student ID, you get to save 10%. So you have to pay 90% of that. So if you have a student ID, it only costs you 162. And if you're under six feet tall, you only have to pay for 80% of that price, which means your final price was 129 dollars and 60 cents. But that's only for how many coats? One. Now what we want to do with that is multiply it by three because you bought three of them. So 129.60 multiplied by the three coats that Calvin bought. Your final answer is $388.80. All good with that? Seniors save 10% on Wednesdays at the bulk barn. Martha, a standard old person name, buys 120 grams of paprika, 100, 250 grams of coriander, and 1.1 kilograms of nutmeg. That's a lot of nutmeg. It is a lot of nutmeg. If paprika is $4 per 100 grams, coriander is $2.20 per 100 grams, and nutmeg is $8.80 per 100 grams, what's the final price Martha must pay? including 15% HST. This is a difficult, difficult question. Let's figure out how much the paprika is going to cost first. So 
<clears throat> is $4 for 100 grams. So I don't suspect many people have this one right, but we're going to use proportional reasoning to solve this. Let's try this. So we're going to start off with paprika. The rate is $4 per 100 grams. How much is it for 120 grams? So the first step is to apply our proportional reasoning skills that we have acquired last month. Right, Jordan? And we're going to figure out how much the paprika is going to cost. The easiest way, the one that most people like, is to use algebra. But you can use algebra, get 100x equals 480 if you want. Or, if you knew this was the way you can do it, you can still get that as well. Or you could do uh, how much it is. No, I think that's the easiest. How much would the paprika cost then? For 120 grams. I figure if I wait here long enough, either the uh, batteries in my headphones are going to run out or somebody's going to say the answer. Thank you very much, Gavin. $4.80 is what the paprika is going to cost for the 120 grams. The coriander is the rate is, where's the rate for coriander? $2.20 per 100 grams. So how much would it be for, how much did she buy? 250 grams. Do we need to do the algebra method or do we know what we multiply both terms by in our first rate? What do you multiply 100 by to get 250? 2.5. That works for this one. So $2.20. multiplied by 2.5 means that the coriander cost her $5.50. And finally, our last one, nutmeg. Nutmeg is $8.80 per 100 grams. How much is it for, how am I going to put 1.1 kilograms there? How many grams is 1.1 kilograms? Well, how many grams in a kilogram? That's right, 1,000. Perfect. So 1,100 grams is 1.1 kilograms is what she bought, right? Is that what she bought? Yeah. What do I multiply both terms by? 10.1. Is that right? No, 11. Who said 10.1? It's 11. Who said that? That voice in my head. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself today. I don't feel like anyone's here with me. The cost for her, not holy mackerel, Martha, what are you doing? $96.80 is what she spent on nutmeg. She's out of her mind. Okay. So if she wasn't a senior... And she went to the bulk bar and she bought that. The cost of her items would be four dollars and eighty cents plus five dollars and fifty cents plus ninety six eighty. But guess what? She is a senior. So what percent of that, Gavin, is she going to pay for? Because she's a senior, she gets a ten percent discount. She gets to only pay ninety percent of this. Which means if I multiply it by zero decimal nine. That will be the sale price for her senior's discount. That's what she pays. But then, all of this, that sale price that I put in square brackets has to be taxed. And what's the tax? 15. So what am I going to multiply that by, Padme, to get the final price, including the 15% tax? Not sure? Kylie, what do I multiply it by to get the final price? If there's 15% tax, is multiplying it by 0 decimal 0.15 going to get me the final price? No. What do I multiply it by? There we go. And ladies and gentlemen, that should work out to be the final price, Martha, 
has to pay at bulk burn. Let's just take our calculator and see, shall we? All right. Add up her bill, $4.80 for the paprika, $5.50 for the coriander, plus $96.80 for her nutmeg, $107.10, but she's not paying that. She gets her senior's discount, so she only pays for 90% of that. Her bill, when she gets the ta uh, cash, is $96.39. That's taxed at a rate of 15%, so multiply it by 1 for the 100% of it plus the tax of 15%. And her final bill is $110.84 and 85 hundredths of a cent. 110.84.85 cents. Which will be approximately, we're not going to play that whole game, $110.85 cents.